नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय नम पार्वती पद हर हर महा हरिओं योगे न चित्त पदे न वाचा मल शरीर से वैद्यक योपाकोत्तम प्रवर मुनीतंजलि प्राजलिरानस्मी पतंजलि प्राजलिरानस्मी अथ योगाशासन योगश्चित्तवृत्तिरोध अथ योग अनुशासन सो नाउ द डिप्लिन ऑफ योग विल बी एक्सपाउंडेड द फर्स्ट टीचर ऑफ योग इज हिरण्य गर्भ बट पतंजलि ऋषि ही हैज ब्रॉड दिस होल फिलोसफी और द दर्शन ऑफ योग टूगेदर इन टू दिस योग सूत्रस सो योग इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड and one should understand it entirely so the second sutra itself defines what is this yoga so yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha yoga is quietude or uh, what you call stopping of all vrittis of the chitt so i am not translating anything into english i will explain each and every this term so yoga is the stopping nirodha is to stop rokna rodha nirodha to stop to stop what the vrittis of the chitt that is called yoga here we have to understand uh, these three terms followed by yoga chitt vritti and nirodha here patanjali doesn't say that uh, mana vritti he says chitt vritti chitt is a very important technical term so it is the chitta vritti nirodha not quietude or cessation of thoughts of the mind we are talking about chitta so when that chitta vritti nirodha happens that is the state of yoga later on we will find that this uh, also happens in two stages one is when all the thoughts they get dropped except one thought one thought remains uh, that is the called the ekagra vritti ekagra vritti ekagra means uh, single pointed only one thought is there or focused thought is there that is also called yoga that is uh, also called sampradnyat samadhi but when that 
thought also gets dropped, then that is the asampradnyat samadhi. So both the meaning is brought out in this term by saying yoga chitta vritti nirodha. He doesn't say sarva chitta vritti nirodha. If, if that word sarva was there, then it would have meant only the asampradnyat samadhi. But here he uses only chitta vritti nirodha, means it ekagra vritti also is included in yoga. And then nirodha vritti. Nirodha means elimination of all thoughts or all vrittis. So in order to understand this uh, uh, sutra, we will have to first comprehend what is the meaning of chitta. And then we will also try to understand what is the meaning of vritti. So for this, you will have to then go back to the Sankhya philosophy, which explains all these terms. So assuming that we know our Patanjali Rishi did not define the chitta and all, but then we will try to understand it with the help of this chart. I hope all of you can see the chart. You can see the Purusha. You can see this Jnanendriya Karmendra Mahabhut. Okay. So, these are the, 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 the main thing, the whole chart is like the, in brief, the Sankhya, Sankhya philosophy is conveyed through this chart. Hmm. So, in Sankhya, they talk about two, two main, uh, what you call, main uh, 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 tattva, you cannot say tattva also, but two main entities. One is Purusha and another is Prakriti. This is mentioned not only in Sankhya, as I said, even Bhagavad Gita is based on Sankhya. Bhagavad Gita also talks about this Purusha and Prakriti. In the, in the 13th chapter, Bhagavan talked about this Purusha Prakriti. Purusha and, Purusha and Prakriti are anadi and all. Uh, so there is this Purusha and there is Prakriti. Prakriti itself is uh, in Vedanta called Maya, but here the term Maya is not used. In Sankhya, they use the term only Prakriti. So Prakriti is uh, a vector. A vector is, means it is not manifest. Not manifest means it is not directly experienced. Nobody experiences Prakriti in its pure form. It is a vect only. It is beyond all comprehension. It can only be inferred. I am using the word it, but it is feminine gender, but she. She can only be inferred. But uh, directly one cannot comprehend this uh, Prakriti. Therefore it is, it is uh, inferred, therefore it is called that which is understood through Anuman, through inference. Ah. One inference which uh, the scripture talks about this Prakriti is, uh, from the effect of this Prakriti, the, all that which follows Prakriti, what you see below, Maha, Tena, Hankar, and Mana, Tanmatra, this Jnana means Jnanendriya, Karmendriya, and Mahabhut, all of them are the expressions of Prakriti. So from the expressions of Prakriti, one infer the presence of Prakriti, and also the nature of Prakriti. The nature of Prakriti is inferred as of the nature of Sattvagun, Rajogun and Tamagun. Prakriti is made up of these three gunas or these three gunas themselves are Prakriti. Sattvagun, Rajogun and Tamagun. Because these three gunas and their effect we see in all that which follows after Prakriti. 
therefore it must be of this nature of this sattva gun rajogun tamogun and these three gunas they uh, all of you know about it so sattva gun is bright and brilliant uh, rajogun is uh, active and tamogun is uh, is like inertia hmm when these three gunas are in perfect equilibrium samya avastha it is called when these three gunas are in perfect equilibrium they are they they are not experience at all they go into they are like avyakt so therefore this prakriti is indicated as the samya avastha of these three gunas samya means equilibrium samya doesn't mean saman ha huh? but all these three sattva gun rajogun and tamogun are not expressing at all from their effect we infer that they are there but they are not expressing at all it's like uh, sometimes we find that uh, it is uh, the there is no wind but you know that after some time the wind blows you know that wind was there somewhere hidden but it was not experience so similarly when these three gunas are in perfect equilibrium they are they are uh, not experience they are unmanifest and that is the state of this prakriti samya avastha hmm purusha is is uh, beyond this prakriti purusha is of different nature altogether what in vedanta or in upanishad is indicated as brahma is this purusha or it is also indicated as purusha itself in kathopanishad it's indicated as purusha itself in bhagavad gita bhagwan calls it purushottama purusha itself he calls purushottama so brahma purushottama all these are same this purusha only ha uh, or atma hmm. is pure consciousness satchid anand swarup nirvikar free from all modification all changes ha uh, it's a uh, beyond all comprehension cannot be comprehended by the mind the intellect or anything untouched unaffected beyond kal that is this purusha and prakriti is though in samya avastha remains free from all 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 change or free from com- comprehension the prakriti itself modifies to become all these other tattvas so prakriti is indicated as that which is changing having these three gunas having vikar and all so the first vikar of prakriti the first modification of prakriti is called that mahat tattva so this mahat tattva is the first modification of prakriti it's it's called vikruti prakriti is prakriti but this all these are like vikrutis so mahat tattva is the first vikruti vikruti means it is prakriti only but modified is like milk becoming curd so milk is there and it has become curd or like akash becoming vayu akash is there then it gets converted into vayu then agni then what you call jala and prithvi so similarly the prakriti which is in samya avastha first the sattva gun pure sattva gun with a little trace of rajogun and tamogun it modifies into another tattva called mahat tattva 
So Mahatattva is Sattva Pradhan. It is almost sat Sattvic only, but nothing is purely Sattvic. So little trace of Rajogun and Tamogun is also there. And Sattva is bright. Sattva is transparent like. Uh, bright, transparent. And in this Mahat Tattva, then there is this uh, reflection of the presence of Purusha is there. Purusha is there, present. So in this Mahat Tattva, the presence of Purusha is also there, which is called the reflection of Purusha. Uh. But you can say that Purusha is in its almost original form because the Prakriti is or the Mahatattva is expressing only the Sattva Gun. It's like something is, uh, is covered with totally transparent some paper or something. So we cannot say it is not covered. But we cannot see it is covered also in the sense it is Kon Bhat Karrahe Bahar Acha TK. So it is um, it is that Mahat Tattva is the most important thing which we have to understand because that Mahat Tattva at a cosmic level. Mahat Tattva itself is what we call the cosmic uh, chitta, samashti chitta, samashti chitta. Then Purusha plus Mahat Tattva is also called that Hiranyagarbha. Hmm. Or what? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or Ishvara. So it's a very important. And this Samashti Chitta itself uh, also a part of that Samashti Chitta is our Vashti Chitta, individual Chitta. So when we talk about our Chitta, it's a very subtle uh, factor in our, in our personality. It's a very esoteric, very subtle factor in our personality. Hmm. So when we talk about Chitta Vritti, we are talking about this Vrittis which are happening in this Chitta. We are not talking about Mana. Mana comes later on. Actually Mana comes much later. It's a later Tattva. So this uh, Mahat Tattva and uh, it's, it's like the Chitta of Bhagwan only, pure. Hmm. Then that Mahatattva itself, in Mahatattva when more of, little more of Rajogun and Tamogun comes, then it gets converted into another Tattva called Ahankar. Ahankar is also here, Samashti Ahankar. It is also another tattva. And Vashti Ahankar is what we experience as Ahankar, individual. But at Samashti level also, this is Samashti Ahankar. It's a tattva. Tattva means it is different from Mahat Tattva. It's further modification to become another element, distinct element. These are each distinct element derived from Prakriti. Then this Ahankar further uh, ev uh, what you call uh, express as these five Tanmatras. Five Tanmatras are the Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasagandha. And the subtlest or you can say the subtlest level of this Pancha Mahabhut and all. They are the Pancha Tanmatras. Hmm. So, 
you can say the akash vayu agni jal prithvi in their pure form when they mix together then they are called mahabhut pancha mahabhut when they mix together they become gross but when they are not mixed together when they are in their pure form single each one separate then they are called tan matra tan matra means tad matra that alone not mixed with anything hmm now this prakriti plus mahat tatva plus ahankar and plus this five tan matras all this eight are what is called in bhagavad gita as ashtadha prakriti in bhagavad gita bhagwan calls it ashtadha prakriti he says they are my bhumi rapo nalo vayu kham that is tan matra ahankar iti yam me uh, uh, what is that bhumi rapo nalo vayu kham mano buddhi revacha ahankar iti yam me bhinna prakriti rashtadha what he referred to is this eight tatan matras ahankar mahat tatva and prakriti as his ashtadha prakriti and the presence of purusha is there in all this prakriti in mahat tatva in ahankar in tan matras everywhere that presence of purusha or reflection of purusha makes that prakriti active ah. so that presence of purusha in prakriti is what bhagwan calls in bhagavad gita his para prakriti so para prakriti and apara prakriti those terms are used in bhagavad gita uh, so i am just by the way connecting it so that you uh, can comprehend the connection also so we have the prakriti we have the mahat tatva ahankar tan matra this tan matras they all these five elements in their pure form intermix with each other and they become gross they are called mahabhut pancha mahabhut akash vayu agni jal prithvi then this ahankar actually the tamasik ahankar uh, what to call expresses as tan matra and mahabhut but the sattvic ahankar expresses as mana and jnanendriya and karmendriya hmm sattvic ahankar expresses as mana and further as jnanendriyas and karmendriyas so this all together are the prakriti plus this 30 uh, 23 there the 24 tatvas plus the purusha so this is the uh, main teaching uh, given briefly i am saying in sankhya the talk about purusha prakriti so when the purusha is identified with the prakriti there is bondage when it becomes when it becomes free when one comes to recognize oneself as one is there is freedom hmm. okay so now let us again come back to this mahat tatva so this is the cosmic uh, chitta and part of that cosmic chitta is our own chitta it is the subtlest level of our if one has to say that our mind the the subtler than the mind is this ahankar and subtler than the mind is this chitta hmm. so chitta gathers all the impressions also whatever we see hear taste touch whatever we experience the impression falls on chitta hmm like memory type it the impression falls on chitta so if i see something the indriyas the senses see it the mind is there behind the senses without the mind the seeing doesn't happen 
so mind is nothing but the extension of this senses only uh, mind is considered as the 11th indriya so mana and jnanendriya karmendriya all this put together are the 11 indriyas which are expression of this ahankar means they are the tattvas followed by ahankar ahankar is the cause of that so when we talk about mana mana is indriya only which is uh, like uh, seeing the world through the the senses so mana is the inner indriya antakkarana which observes the world through the senses so the jnanendriyas are able to see the mahabhut experience the mahabhut at the grosser level and the karmendriyas interact with the mahabhut and the mana is there to support or to activate the indriyas if the mana is not there the indriyas will not be activated if i touch something and behind my touching the mind is not there then that thing will not be comprehended like so mind is required so this is the structure of our personality you can see the innermost our real nature is purusha but all other is this prakriti only hmm. okay now this chitta is a as i said is the subtlest uh, level which is pure uh, sattvic in the cosmic state mahat tattva is purely sattvic but in case of in, in case of jivas or individuals it is not purely uh, sattvic there is uh, there is uh, the or it is not yeah it is not in pure in that sense there is the the impurity of avidya and all is there kleshas are there hmm. so this uh, chitta so when our uh, whatever we see hear taste touch everything forms a impression in our chitta and because of based on those impressions only we have experience of this world it is like the film in a camera that when the shutter is open whatever is there outside it enters and the impression is formed on the film similarly the our indriyas are like shutters which are always open the mind and all and the impressions are constantly formed on the chitta so those are the vrittis ha uh, chitta vrittis and these vrittis are there so many of them and uh, what you call uh, the samskar of these vrittis are there in the chitta so here our uh, patanjali rishi is defining yoga as chitta vritti nirodha means the impressions on the chitta when it comes to an end that is the state of yoga or that is the state of samadhi he is describing samadhi avastha here when there is only one chitta vritti is there ekagra vritti then it is called sampradnyat samadhi and when all chitta vrittis have come to an end it is called asampradnyat samadhi many people actually misunderstand the quietude of the mind to a state of no thinking many people say that i was just sitting and no thoughts were coming in my mind and i was this in bliss and all which can be thus indriyas have stopped uh, interacting with the world so the mind which is also a inner indriya has stopped for some time it is sitting quietly 
Uh, it appears that the chitta also has stopped taking impression, but chitta is continuously taking impressions. We have the memory of that sitting quietly also recorded. I was sitting there very quietly, nicely, no thoughts were there. Where were you sitting? I was sitting on that rock. And I was looking at that nice ocean in front of me. So all these are vrittis only. So this is a very subtle uh, state which Patanjali is defining here. And to arrive at this, he will give us the complete method, but the definition has to be comprehended properly. Huh? So yoga chitta vritti nirod is not mana mana vritti nirod, but chitta vritti. Huh? So when we focus our attention from the Mahabhut, we go back to Tanmatras, from there we come to comprehend the Ahankar, then we go back and understand the Chitta and focus our attention that Patanjali Rishi will tell us. Slowly our Vrittis, they come to reduce, only one Vritti is there, that also gets dropped and that is the Chitta Vritti Nirodha. Our Chitta, now one more thing, huh? Lot of new things will you will keep listening. Huh? So tomorrow in your discussion you will have not only the material of this class but tomorrow morning class also. Today was just like a uh, practice, like uh, it was like peanuts. But what tomorrow will be the real test? So uh, where was I in the class? Hmm? Okay, before that, one more thing, what did I say? Okay. So, the Chitta Vritti Nirodha. Okay, got it. This Chitta remains in five avasthas. Those, those are called five Bhumikas of the Chitta. All these are important, huh? I'm not just giving you a lot of uh, information just for fun of it. But all this and all this whole picture will become very clear. So there are five states or uh, bhumikas of the chitta. Chitta remains in this five as though avasthas state. Hmm. One is called modha. Modha. Second is called Kshipta. Third, it is called Vikshipta. Fourth, Ekagra. And fifth, Niruddha. What here is defined or mentioned is Niruddha, Chitta Vritti Niruddha. It is also one of the state of the of the chitta. Chitta can remain free of all thoughts. Chitta can remain with only one single pointed thought. So when it is a single pointed thought, it is called ekagra chitta. When there are no thoughts or no, I am just using the word thought for vritti, huh, which is not a proper translation. Uh, so when it is free from all vrittis, it is called niruddha. But chitta also remains in what we call mood avastha, a dull, tamasic state of the chitta. It's called mood avastha, tamasic. Hmm. Then the second type of avastha which chitta goes through is called kshipta. Kshipta means disturbed, disturbed avastha. Both these avasthas, mood and kshipta are not the natural state of chitta, but they are there. And those who are there in these two states, they are not called, that state is not called yoga. 
mood or kshipt also is not called yoga third state is called vikshipt vikshipt doesn't mean more disturbed huh? vikshipt means which is uh, the chitta which is getting uh, going towards quietude which has gained proper understanding which is becoming more and more sattvic which has developed few good qualities huh? that is called vikshipt like a seeker in its initial stages the mind the chitta of that seeker is in you know, a vikshipt that is also not called yoga but it is in between stage going towards yoga but fourth one is called ekagra ekagra means concentrated ekagra means ek agra means single pointed so single pointed avastha of that chitta is called yoga it is called sampradnyat yoga and then chitta also remains in niruddha avastha that's called asampradnyat yoga or samadhi Hmm. So this is the niruddha is the natural state of the chitta. But many of us are in an unnatural state. So most of the world are in mudha avastha or in kshipta avastha. And those who do some sadhana or those who are evolved and moving towards this state of enlightenment they are in vikshipta avastha and those who can they follow the path shown here and gain that state of ekagrata they are in the ekagra avastha and then the final state of niruddha avastha so yoga chitta vritti nirhod happens when we transcend the vikshipta come to the ekagra avastha and then finally that also is dropped and that is the niruddha avastha so that is what is called here yoga chitta vritti nirodha hmm. vritti means uh, being like vartan or it's a impression not the word thought in english doesn't convey the real meaning it's like an impression hmm. just as i gave the example of a, a film and the impression on that film whatever is this impression gets created so whatever we see here whatever we think everything creates an impression so those are called vrittis further actually Patanjali Rishi will classify these vrittis into five. That time we will understand it more clearly. So they are the vrittis of the chitta. And when these vrittis are all, they drop in that state of uh, samadhi, that state is called yoga. So yoga chitta vritti nirodha. So when ekagra vritti also gets dropped, when all the vrittis get dropped, that is the asampradnyat samadhi. When this state comes through, through our sadhana, when we reach this state of yoga, yoga uh, chitta vritti nirodha, then what happens? What happens? That is now said in the next sutra. So the third sutra. Tada drashtuhu Swarupe vasthanam Tada drashtuhu Swarupe vasthanam Tada when that state of ekagrata or niruddha avastha comes of the chitta chitta becomes free of all impressions 
no impressions are created in the chitta means it remains in perfect sattva gun like see when this vrittis are there the chitta gets disturbed and there is this it goes more towards rajogun and then towards tamogun so mood avastha and all like tamoguni avastha kshipta and all rajoguni vikshipta going towards sattva gun ekagra is more sattvic and viksh uh, you know, what you call niruddha is pure sattvic avastha of the of the chitta hmm. so when a person follows this yoga sadhana and as the chitta becomes more and more and more sattvic or becomes free of all these chitta vrittis and when all the chitta vrittis get dropped then what happens then a very interesting thing happens tada tada means at that time when all the vrittis have stopped they have reached that nirodha avastha then drashtu hu drashtu means the seer swarupe avasthanam abides in his own nature again here we have to understand each and every term properly so tada means at that time means when the chitta has become absolutely still absolutely calm and peaceful In that time the seer and who is the seer the ultimate seer is the purusha only but uh, this uh, purusha when he is uh, expressing through the mahat tatva becomes the seer of all the vrittis and all that is happening around it's like a let us say that there is a mirror kept in a strategic position that from the mirror i see what is happening behind the wall somebody is dancing there let us say so i look out in the mirror and i see that person dancing directly i don't see the person dancing but when i am looking in the mi- mirror is not seeing the person dancing a combination of myself and the mirror is the seer of the dancer mirror itself is not the seer i myself am not the seer but myself and the mirror together become the seer you understand similarly purusha himself is not a seer actually purusha is totally beyond all all connection with this prakriti but still there is at present one is experiencing this world one is experiencing prakriti itself is not experiencing because prakriti is inert purusha is also not experiencing because purusha is not not having any modification or any change so there is we have to accept one entity uh, as a combination of this prakriti and purush or this mahat tattva and purush which gets dissolve once one transcends or one goes into that state of meditation or that samadhi all this concept of uh, drashta also get dissolved but at present it is there so this drashta that is the purusha reflection of purusha in mahat tattva uh, along with that uh, mahat tattva becomes as though the drashta is very in- important point so this drashta is what we call that at present i i experiencing the world hmm so through drashta itself through the senses sees the world through the mind things and all and the drashta is the one who identifying with all this does the sadhana also 
so when one this drashta quietens the mind quietens the chitta hmm, and when the vrittis all come to a standstill i mean there are no vrittis when the chitta becomes absolutely sattvic pure free from all modification all disturbance then what happens the drashta gets established in his own swarup who is what is the swarup of drashta the purusha purusha is the swarup of drashta purusha itself is not the drashta but swarup of drashta is purusha for example i am looking through the mirror so when let us say the mirror is taken away mirror is not there then what happens to one who was looking that one who was looking gets established in me as though it's just a way of expressing the drashta gets dissolved i remain here no longer seeing what is who is dancing and all hmm so when the mind the chitta becomes absolutely still the drashta gets established in his own swarup identity or with respect to connected with that mahatatva is not in its swarup being a drashta is not the swarup of the purusha being a drashta being the then it also becomes the doer the feeler and all that is not the real swarup of the purusha i mean yeah so that uh, this drashta gets established in his own swarup so tada drashtuhu swarupe avasthanam this state is called kaivalya avastha which is the ultimate goal of yoga and ultimate goal of all the scriptures kaivalya avastha so tada drashtuhu swarupe avasthanam in this avastha in this kaivalya avastha only purusha alone is there now very interesting the prakriti when the chitta becomes absolutely still it as though dissolves into prakriti really speaking then there is no such thing called prakriti also in that kaivalya avastha then there is no such thing called prakriti we talk about prakriti only from this standpoint at present but once a person once that kaivalya avastha is attained then there is no prakriti at present we talk of prakriti as in a samya avastha all the sattva gun raja gun tamo gun in equilibrium which expresses as mahat tatva hankar tan matra etc but when one reaches that state when the chitta vritti has stopped then what happens actually why chitta vritti have stopped that detail we will see further because the drashta the purusha only as drashta is no more interested in the dance of this prakriti it's called vairagya when it is no more interested then the prakriti doesn't have any role to play as though hmm. so it it is no more there so tada drashtuhu swarupe avasthanam so when the chitta vritti nirodh happens then one doesn't have to do anything then we get established in our own nature our role as us now identified with this prakriti and all our role is to just reach that first the ekagra avastha which will lead us to the niruddha avastha of the chitta once that has happened then automatically one reaches this state of kaivalya Hmm. tadad rashtuhu swarupe avasthana 
this is the ultimate goal which is indicated in our scriptures to reach that kaivalya avastha my own real nature so tada drashtuh swarupe avasthan so when i am not in this kaivalya avastha what happens then all the vrittis are there and when vrittis are there what happens the drashta identifies with this vritti hmm that is what now is said in the fourth sutra we will see the fourth sutra vritti sarupyam itaratra vritti sarupyam itaratra vritti sarupyam itaratra ha vritti sarupyam itaratra itaratra at other time when the nirodh avastha is not there when the chitta has got vrittis in it then what happens then that purusha appears like the vrittis whatever be the vrittis it appears like that ha ah, is like the colored paper or colored glass or something the object behind appears of that color though it is not of that color it appears of that color suppose a, an object is there and if i have a red color glass and i look through it that object appears red blue color it appears blue but when there are no colors on this glass it is transparent then it appears as it is similarly when there are no vrittis then the purusha get established in himself as he is but when there are vrittis then he appears like the vrittis vritti sarupyam it appears as though of that nature so when there are uh, disturbing vrittis i experience myself as disturbed i am disturbed when there are happy vrittis i say i am happy when there are sad vrittis i say i am sad huh so i become as though of the nature of this vrittis i have not actually become but i appear to become like that so mood of mood avastha i become mood kshipta avastha i become kshipta vikshipta i become vikshipta ekagra i become ekagra but when the niruddha avastha happens then i get established in my own self as i am so vritti sarupyam itaratra so in other avasthas it is it takes the nature of the vrittis these four sutras of this yoga sutra they are like chatushutri sutri they are like in four sutras the entire Uh, philosophy of this yoga is conveyed just like though they are very deep but they are like the sar of the entire yoga sutra just as brahma sutras also though there are 555 sutras the entire philosophy is conveyed in four sutras athato brahma jignasa janmadyasya yatah shastra yonitvat tattu samanvayat these are the four sutras of brahma sutra if you understand this four we understand the whole brahma sutra yeah. that may be quite optimistic but uh, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. similarly these four sutras are like the sar of the all this In fact, the previous sutra, which we saw, the second sutra, Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirod, that conveys the four chapters of uh, Yoga Sutra. The term Yoga it indicates Samadhi, talks about this Samadhi Pad. 
चित्त सो द साधना इज टू क्वाइटन द चित्त टू मेक इट मोर एंड मोर प्योर टॉक्स अबाउट हाउ वी कैन मेक द चित्त मोर एंड मोर सात्विक एंड टेक इट टूवर्ड्स दैट निरुद्ध अवस्था सो दैट इज लाइक साधना सो सेकेंड पाद इज साधना पाद इस इज इट इज इंडिकेटेड बाय द टर्म चित्त then the third path is vibhuti path in which there are various vibhutis various powers which are nothing but powers due to the various types of vrittis so that is indicated by the term vritti but the last chapter which is kaivalya avastha which is attained through when the there is nirodh takes place when all the vrittis come to an end so that is indicate indicated by the term nirodha so yoga chitta vritti nirodha that one sutra itself conveys the entire thing briefly ek sutra mein ha ah. but it's like concentrated like so in order to make us understand it more deeply in detail the other sutras are there सुवृत्ति सारूप्यम इतरत्र नाउ इफ दिस फोर आर अंडरस्टूड एंड इज स्टडीड प्रॉपरली देन फ्रॉम नेक्स्ट सूत्र ऑनवर्ड्स पतंजलि ऋषि नाउ एनालाइजिस एंड मेक अस अंडरस्टैंड द वृत्तिस because that is the main thing now one has to attain that state of nirodha chitta vritti nirodha so in order to make us understand this we have to first understand what is this vrittis and how many different types of vrittis are there hmm so that is now being discussed in the following sutra vrittaya पंचत क्लिष्टा क्लिष्टा वृत्त पंचत क्लिष्टा क्लिष्टा हाँ वृत्त वृत्ति द इम्प्रेशंस विच आर कॉन्स्टंटली हैपनिंग इन अवर चित्त दे आर मैनी एक्चुअली वृत्त दे आर मैनी मैनी आर दे आर दिस वृत्तिस इट इज लाइक द इट्स लाइक वी हैव द स्क्रीन ऑन विच द मूवी इज हैपनिंग सम मूवी लेटेस्ट मूवी और वॉट एवर मूवी सो इफ यू जस्ट सी दैट दे आर जस्ट प्ले ऑफ सम कलर्स constant play of colors are happening on the screen but they can be divided into basic three colors also sometimes uh, but all these are play of colors happening constantly on the screen when only the what you call uh, during interval and all then all this the all this play of this color stop that's called chitta vritti nirodha that time all of people go to eat popcorn so that screen is like chitta and that which happens on the screen is like the vrittis hmm. constantly it is happening so this vrittis are of five types there might be uh, we might say no no i have hundreds and thousands of variety of vrittis but they are only five types the rishis they have understood they have classified this vrittis into five types only panchatayah five types of vrittis and these five types of vrittis are also क्लिष्ट एंड अक्लिष्ट क्लिष्ट मीन्स गिविंग पेन पेनफुल वृत्तिस 
एंड अक्लिष्ट मीन्स विदाउट पेन विदाउट गिविंग एनी पेन और सौरो और मिजरी एंड क्लिष्ट मीन्स गिविंग मिजरी सौरो पेन क्लिष्ट एंड अक्लिष्ट वृत्तिस देर आर लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल दोज ग्रेट योगीज हु हैव रीच द स्टेट ऑफ संप्रज्ञा समाधि एंड इवन असंप्रज्ञा लेटर ऑन असंप्रज्ञा समाधि दे मे नॉट हैव टोटली गॉट एस्टैब्लिश इन दैट कैवल्य अवस्था दैट इज संस्कार इज स्टील रिमेनिंग इन देयर चित्त ऑल्सो वृत्ति इज हैपन देर इज कॉन्स्टंट लुकिंग एट द वर्ल्ड एंड ऑल इज देयर सो वृत्ति इज हैपन बट डोज वृत्ति इज आर फ्री फ्रॉम क्लेश रियलाइज मास्टर्स इन देयर चित्त ऑल्सो वृत्ति इज हैपन they are not in that kaivalya or the nirudd what you call nirvikalp or asampradnya samadhi interact like bhagwan ramana maharshi is there interact with the world talks to people yeah? if somebody ask question he thinks and replies so vrittis are happening in the chit but very interesting those vrittis are not giving even a little bit of sorrow even when so called klishta vritti in the sense somebody comes and tells something very sad story also people like to tell sad stories to mahatmas they get great joy i mean i don't know aisa hua aisa hua ye pareshani hai so mahatma they listen very attentively but there is no sorrow in their heart or in their chit because the vritti stop giving them trouble vrittis are there but they are no longer klisht kuch nahi hota hai sometimes people feel very sad that itne sad story bolne ke baad bhi <laughs> kuch farak nahi padta hai but really there is no even bhagwan ishwar this mahabhu this uh, mahatatva is ishwaras chit in which also there is vrittis of the whole cosmos world but there is no klesh so in ishwaras chit and in the realize master chit thoughts are there i mean the vrittis are there but they no longer give any klesh there are this five kleshas mention in the next chapter it is mention actually but since the term has come here briefly i will tell you about it there are five this uh, things uh, which causes this pain or this causes misery they are called avidya asmita rag dvesh and abhinivesh avidya asmita rag dvesh and abhinivesh avidya is uh, ignorance which is the cause of asmita asmita is a sense of i in the in prakriti considering the anatma as atma what in vedanta we call the sense of i am this identifying with the with the chitta in all other expressions and having the sense of i in that which is caused because of avidya which is like taking the anatma as or as real that which is just uh, changing an illusory as real so this avidya which causes asmita which causes raga and dvesha 
means attachment and repulsion, and abhinivesh is attachment to life. These are all klesha, they are called klesha because they give rise to sorrow, pain. Vrittis by themselves are not sorrow giving, but if that klesha is there, then it gives, they give sorrow. Therefore, this klesha are, these pancha kleshas are like the dosha of vrittis. Defects like, if those defects are eliminated, then the vrittis did no longer give any trouble. If there are no, there is no abhinivesh, no attachment to life. If there is no ragad dvesha, if there is no asmita, sense of I in the anatma, in the prakriti, hence there is no avidya, then vrittis might be there but it will not, they will no, no longer give any sorrow. Hmm. So therefore they are aklist. So Ishwara's vrittis are aklist like. So vrittayaha, panchatayaha, five types of vrittis. Are, what are those five types will be mentioned in the next sutra. So there are five types of vrittis. But further they are classified as Krishna and Aklishta. So these five types are sorrow giving and non-sorrow giving. All these vrittis have to come to an end. Then when the chitta becomes free of all these vrittis, that is the Niruddha Vastha. So first all these things are explained and then the Rishi will also explain how to gain that Niruddha Vastha. As I said, this is a text on discipline or sadhana. So all the necessary things for sadhana will be explained. So more about this we will see in our class tomorrow.